Hi friends, this is Mitro, an English tutor, and in this short video, let me remind you of a very spread and common mistake in our writing and uh, speaking at any test of English. And this mistake eats away a certain part of your score. Um, for some of you, this mistake will seem obvious, and you can say that, oh man, that I know this, so it's not interesting. But I'm sure that a lot of you I haven't even thought about it, let alone analyzing why it happens and what are the foundation rules for this and so on. Okay, let me show you something. So let's imagine that you're writing an essay uh, at Duolingo, for instance, yes, or at IELTS. Just a moment, let me show you. So this is an old uh, book about writing in English. It's about almost maybe 100 years old, but it doesn't matter. The principles you know, I want to tell you that within the last, I don't know, 90, 100 years, nothing basic has changed in the English language. Yes, the lexics, you know, the, the, those vocabulary, yeah, but uh, basic grammar rules, no. Probably there are from 3 to 5, like, changes, but... So, these books are very actual, even nowadays. So, let me show you something. For example, a person writes, the great event is when the train arrives. Some of you will not even notice this mistake, though it's obvious it's a crying one. The great event is. When we have is, it means that. We have mostly a nominal subject. You see, event is a noun. And so in this case, the predicate should also be nominal, formed on the basis of a noun or a gerund. But um, uh, not phrase beginning with when or where or to do. So, this is wrong. The great event is when the train arrives. If, during your speaking, if you say like that, probably you will be forgiven, you will be, let's say, mercied to some degree, because it's speaking, it's uh, given a greater degree of freedom. But in your writing, you will be penalized. And so, what's the correct variant? And the correct variant is like this. The great event is the arrival of the train. You see, here I have a noun. If I have is, I should have a nominal predicate, not when something happens or to do something, like the great event is to arrive by the train. No, 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 no. Uh, let's look at one more example. Immigration is where foreigners come into a country. You see, immigration is what? So we should have here what? Something nominal, not when or where or to do. So the right variant is immigration is the entering of foreigners into a country. Or probably we can say that immigration is the phenomenon or the process of entering the country by foreigners, something like that. But not when or where or just to do, to enter a country, to enter a country. Immigration is to enter a country. No, no. A simile, a simile is a stylistic uh, device used in literature. Let's not delve deep into this, but uh, a simile is when one object is compared with another. Again, I have is... So here, I expect something nominal. Let me show you. So the correct variant. A simile is a figure of speech in which one object is compared with another. You see? Or we could write, for example, a simile is um, probably comparing one object with another. So a gerund. Probably it's not so ideal as the noun, but at least it's not so wrong, it's not so wrong as to do something. Okay, so let's skip this, uh, a lot of theoretical material here, so if you want to read, you can put a video on pause and read it, So, but for some of you it will be difficult even to understand uh, this. Let us observe some practical examples, and then uh, practice examples, and then correct them. For example, so this is wrong, the pistol, I'm sorry, yeah, the pistol shot is when the race begins, yeah? So, how can we modify it to make it normal? Just a moment, please. So, let's think together. Try, please, to provide your own variant. So, this is an incorrect variant, and now I'm giving the correct one. The pistol shot is... is what? The beginning of the race. Oh, I'm sorry. The beginning of as a race. Or you can just a little bit twist it, like the pistol shot signifies the beginning of the race, something like that. But it does not change the principle. 
if we have something like is here, then we should have, if we have here noun, we should have here also a noun. One more uh, example. A snob is when a man treats others as inferior socially. Okay, let's take it. Let's think how can we write correctly. A snob is... What do you think? Because uh, there are several variants, of course, you understand, not one. A snob is a person, for example, who treats, and so on, who treats others as inferior socially. Yeah, here I have a noun, here I have a noun. And a lot of you would say, for example, a snob is, uh, a snob is to treat others uh, inferior, as inferior, yeah? So it's also wrong. We, we shouldn't uh, speak like that, even more so write like that. So where we have the original name. The wireless telegraph is where messages are sent a long distance through the air. The wireless telegraph is where or when messages are sent long distance through the air. Now, I'm sure you have already guessed about uh, the correct meaning, yes? The wireless telegraph is... Here we have uh, several options. For example, is uh, a technology of... or which, in which, you know, of sending uh, messages a long distance is like la 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 through the area. Yeah. Here I have a noun telegraph. Here I have a noun technology. What do we have next here? The definition of usury is where one charges interest higher than the legal rate. Yes, usury is a very interesting noun. By the way, it's a very rare one, I think. Usury means un unfairly high interest rates on loans. Yeah, very interesting word. Usury. The definition of usury, or it could have been just a usury, or the usury is, where, la 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 la, you see, it does not change anything. So let's provide a correct, uh, the correct variant here. For example, the definition of usury, or the usury, is, for example, charging uh, what char uh, for example, charging illegal illegally I'm I hope I have spelled it correctly. The user is charging illegally high interest rates. Something like that. I hesitated a bit because you understand we have here several options. The usury is, for example, a, phen a phenomenon or a practice of charging, or just the usury is uh, illegally high interest rates without this charging, without this gerund. So you have a number of options, but not where to do, where one does, when one does, or just to do something. And the last, finally, we have what we have just a moment. Um, biology is when one studies plant and animal life. Okay, let's borrow this. And correct it. Biology is when studies plant and animal life. I hope you have already understood. Yeah, biology is probably the simplest one. The study of plant and animal life. Okay, let's come up with the one or two like more present day examples. Let's suppose you're writing your essay and uh, you have a question like what is your favorite place in your city? Something like that, yeah. And so some guys can write my favorite place, for example, in the city is where we uh, drink coffee. But it's not very nice. Better, my favorite place in the city is a cozy cafe. 
in the co or coffee shop where we drink and so on you understand yeah again I'm sure some of you especially beginners or you know not so experienced writers they don't even think of it they will write like that for your speaking again as that can do for some degree you will be penalized but not greatly because it's speaking but writing no no try to abstain from doing this because you will be penalized here we have a noun place here we have a noun and you will be ideal Google is something like unhappy with my okay let it be uh, cozy cafe I ah, because of this apostrophe my favorite place in the city is a cozy cafe or um, for example what is your favorite time of the day yeah for example my favorite time in the day of the day is when I listen to music you see now the principle here yeah? so let's transform it into something normal my favorite time oh I'm sorry uh, during the day is for example a period when or during which something like that when I listen to music you see I I am comparing juxtaposing nominal things here and there and you will be flawless yeah something like that friends so okay this was my message for today uh, you know that there is such a saying that everything genius is simple so let me repeat please uh, that you think that like it's obvious and when you're excited especially at such dynamic tests as Duolingo when you have five minutes or actually maybe even less because while you start typing yes you think or something else you have 4.5 minutes to type your essay you are anxious you're agitated and um, in this state of your mind you are very likely to commit these primitive childish mistakes I tell you I see it every day because you understand one thing is when you look from a different vantage point at your activity yeah? and the other thing is when you are doing it by yourself on your own like right here and now you do not see what you're doing it's very difficult to observe your own activity from some angle you understand it's like coaching for example why uh, why does a person need a coach because it's very difficult to coach yourself I wouldn't say that it's impossible as a lot of guys say but it's very difficult it's for unique individuals the same applies here you don't see your mistakes okay my friends so think about it I hope if you have spent diligently your time watching this as you think like a boring video I'm sure that when you write when you sit down to write your test you will avoid this mistake you will write perfectly I mean in this situation if you need urgent help in uh, getting ready to Duolingo, IELTS, TOEFL, all the jazz, you're welcome to contact me. I help people on a regular basis and you know my students quite often they get really high scores at the test. Okay friends, I love you, wish you success and see you in our next lesson.